In the second episode of the year, we looked at Starlight's first appearance in the Cutie map and how it was so thoroughly misinterpreted by nearly everyone who glanced in its direction. We didn't talk too much about Starlight's overall presence as an antagonist because we already have a video talking about that and I thought the comical overreaction to such an underwhelming villain was the more interesting discussion. This time we're talking about Starlight's redemption and later implementation as a protagonist and we're getting more in-depth regarding story structure and character work here. Considering that DHX is still trying to convince everyone who isn't immediately hypnotized by a single cute face that Starlight is a character that we shouldn't want to bludgeon with a sledgehammer, it's a good idea to analyze exactly what went wrong with her big turnaround moment. So, what are the key elements of a good redemption arc, and how does a bad redemption arc fuck them up? I found myself ruminating on this for a while, and I realized that the best way to look at this would be to analyze the character that's closest to Starlight in terms of design and execution. Sunset Shimmer. Sunset Shimmer has had the best redemption arc in the series, one that's notorious for salvaging an otherwise forgettable character. People have sort of forgotten this, but when Sunset first appeared, she was one of the most underwhelming antagonists the series had seen at that point, and nobody was buying her turnaround at the end of Equestria Girls, and rightfully so. Which brings us to our first element. Sunset was given a second chance by Twilight, but Twilight didn't just leave her there. She put Sunset under the direct supervision of her new friends at Canterlot High, but she wasn't being supervised by just them. She was also being heavily scrutinized by the rest of the school, from the students all the way to the faculty. Rainbow Rocks opens with Sunset getting an outright pummeling by the rest of the student body. The key message here is, you didn't buy her turnaround? Yeah, neither did them. By contrast, Starlight is put under the supervision of Twilight in her castle, but enjoys the luxury of anonymity. The rest of Equestria knows her only as Twilight's apprentice. Starlight's town was an unknown element of Equestria until Twilight and her friends came along. The only people who might have shown any degree of mistrust toward her are the ponies of that town itself, and they infamously rushed in to hug her as part of a montage without a single question. This shouldn't be rocket science. When you fuck people over, they're going to be suspicious of you when you suddenly come back with a smile and an assertion that you're not an evil bastard anymore. This is a crucial part of a redemption storyline because you're easing the character into the cast while at the same time you're easing them into the audience as well. Sunset not only had to win back the students of Canterlot High, she also had to win back an audience that was not impressed with her first appearance. If anything, the meta plot of Rainbow Rocks is getting a previously apathetic viewer base to care about Sunset. Discord was scrutinized by the main six. Sunset was scrutinized by everybody. Starlight gets off scot-free and is worse for it. <laughs> Guilt is a crucial part of redemption, and Friendship is Magic is bad at it. Really, really, really bad. The problem with guilt in Friendship is Magic is that it's often self-imposed with little to no outside influence. Infamously, Princess Luna tortured herself every night as a punishment for how much Equestria suffered because of her. A suffering that the entirety of Equestria seems to hold absolutely zero grudges for, to the point that they made it into a fun holiday for kids. Come back to Sunset, and she's being outright pilloried. Even expressing frustration at how much people around her seem determined to keep reminding her of what a horrible human being she was. Starlight has to keep reminding the audience about everything she's done because there's no outside force reminding her about it to drive the conflict. This results in a personality that amounts to little more than I'm very very sorry for what I did. Starlight has to be constantly feeling guilt because she never has to suffer. She's developed a guilt complex because she was never properly punished for her crimes. And this remains the big problem with Starlight. Throughout all of Season 6, the audience is treated to constant, unending recaps of Starlight's terrible run as a villain, which sends Starlight into another run of moping, and the viewers expected to feel sorry for Starlight. Except, I don't feel sorry for Starlight, because she deserves far more than she's getting. Even just having her whacked in the head with a brick would suffice, when did it become a rule that only Spike is allowed to be subjected to painful slapstick? This comes to probably one of the biggest mistakes, not just when it comes to redemption, but when it comes to making sympathetic characters, and that is... Nobody likes a chronic sulk. The quickest way to kill any idea of a character being sympathetic is to have them spend an unreasonably large amount of time feeling sorry for themselves. Steven Universe is rife with this. There are a handful of primary characters whose entire character arc amounts to them sitting around and sulking, doing absolutely nothing to address and fix the problems they seem to very accurately identify. You're mad at me? No, I get mad at myself. That's uh, the thing I do. I get mad at myself and then it makes me suck at everything I do even more. These characters get untold amounts of praise from large sections of the internet because instant Secure people who hate themselves love to spend a lot of time on the internet partaking in self-pity instead of self-improvement. But I don't think I need to point out that these are not healthy people. 
And of course they're going to love a character with the same problems who never works to fix said problems. The human mind is a miracle and you will never see it spring more beautifully into action than when it is fighting against evidence that it needs to change. Your psyche is equipped with layer after layer of defense mechanisms designed to shoot down anything that might keep things from staying exactly where they are. Ask any addict. Misery is comfortable. It's why so many people prefer it. Happiness takes effort. By contrast, some of the most enjoyable characters in both Friendship is Magic and Steven Universe are characters who exploit their jovial attitude as I explained in Guiding Key. The only time Peridot ever truly mopes in the series are when she wants to get Lapis to forgive her and when she's forced to deal with the fact that she doesn't have powers. And in both of those instances, Peridot is forced to get off her ass and deal with her problems. Amethyst even drags her to that conclusion kicking and screaming. Talk about irony. You put those on. What for? Because you're going to go down to your office, you're going to apologize to your boss and get your job back. No. I'm sorry, did I start that sentence with the words, if it please your highness? <laughs> Conflict. Paradox distracts herself from the fact that she doesn't have powers by clinging to tech. Raising the stakes. Amethyst throws her tablet into the ocean. Resolution. Paradox discovers her ability to manipulate metal brought on by the adrenaline of losing something precious to her. Sunset is of course another example of this. She has a problem, that problem frustrating her, and circumstances in the plot force her to get off her ass and deal with those problems. Conflict. Sunset is trying in vain to become a nicer person at school. Raising the stakes. Her friends start falling apart under the siren's magic. Resolution. Sunset has to bring them down to earth the way they did for her. There's no time to mope. There's shit that needs being done. Which very awkwardly leads us to... Too Short to Ride was one episode. Rainbow Rocks was one movie. Starlight has been around for two and a half seasons now and has yet to have anything close to the quality development that Peridot or Sunset received. Oh, she's had a lot of episodes where she plays straight man to a far more interesting character, so much so that the season six finale can be summed up as Starlight gets stapled to much better characters in the hopes that you'll just forget how dull she is. Season seven continues this trend by stapling her to Trixie and Maud, who were both enjoyable characters in their own right. Despite being the star of numerous episodes, Starlight has never once been the subject of those episodes. She hangs around in the back while other characters take the spotlight, creating the illusion of development where none really exists. An illusion that would be shattered if DHX were dumb enough to cast her alongside characters who were just as criminally undeveloped as she is. This is where the less critically discerning people in the audience start thinking she's a good character and start crying when other people contradict them. This is what leads people to telling me I need to calm down about Starlight, not that I've ever actually been worked up about Starlight, but let's not let reality get in the way of your fantasies, and that my disinterest in covering her episodes in season 6 was somehow petty, even when opting out of content you know you're not going to like is the exact opposite of petty. She spends most of her episodes hanging back while other characters do the work. She gets no development, but she's also not given as much opportunity to screw up either. Most of the actual content goes of the character that she's been stapled to, and Starlight either absorbs, deflects, or reacts. Because she's not doing her previously horrendous things like destroying the very fabric of reality out of spite, or being a fascist, she comes off as inoffensive on her own. Put next to characters with infinitely more personality and sympathetic development, one could be forgiven for thinking that she's become a better character or improved in any way. This bit from Rock Solid Friendship shows what two and a half years have actually brought to the table, a sycophant who trips over her own feet while attempting the most basic of social interactions. She's gone from a boring villain to a boring background pony, and I've not yet decided which one's worse. And so lastly, we come to... I don't think he can. Any major attempt to overall her character at this point is going to seem like too little too late to anyone who wasn't immediately convinced when Starlight made a single cute face, and now DHX is stuck with her. They had the opportunity to junk her and start fresh with a better character and celestial advice, but they opted not to take it. We're now stuck with a character who, despite being given a massive amount of prominence in the series, has shown extremely little progression. Her one defining factor being her fascist philosophy has been swept under the rug and she's been left with… what exactly? Kites? self-pity, and her defining role this season could be easily replaced with literally any other member of the main six, which was done repeatedly in season six and was arguably much better. I didn't know I wanted an Applejack and Fluttershy episode until I got one, which was awesome, and now we're just stuck with her. Nothing to do with her other than slap her in as an obligatory straight man to another character, and nothing to do with this script other than blow raspberries. Little to the left, little to the left. No, a little to the right, more to the right, more, 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 more. 
The point of today's video is that I'm a professional and that I'm right about Starlight and you're not because fuck you. Now give me money.